Hi, I'm Simon Rushton and this is Taxi Chronicles podcast. On this podcast, we spontaneously interview unsuspecting passengers with their permission, allowing them to share their intimate life stories and concerns. As our slogan states, real riders, real stories. Some riders prefer to be anonymous, while others ask me to tell their story later on. Either way, they are all genuine five to ten minutes stories. So sit back and enjoy this episode. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, another rider, another day, another story. Today we've got the lovely Veronica here. Um, she wasn't here before talking about cats and vegans. <laughs> and Well, I guess she was a vegan just from her talk on cats. But anyway, it's another story. Today we're going to be talking about competitive cheerleading. So nice to have you here today, Veronica. Hi, thank you for having me. So tell us about competitive cheerleading, how you got into it, what motivates you to be in there, and uh, what a typical day like is as a cheerleader. Um, so competitive cheerleading, unlike you might think from like American movies, uh, we're not standing on the sidelines cheering people on. So we are our own, I'd say we're our own show, because so we dance, we do acrobatics, by throwing other people in the air and catching them. Um, we also do gymnastics as well by throwing tumbles across the floor. So it's, I'd like to say, two and a half minutes of pure hell, but the sort of hell that you love doing. Okay. Um, I sort of got into it because I've always wanted to do it. So I've always done like adjacent things. So I did parkour, I did karate, I did gymnastics, I did dance but never something that actually pulled them all together. And then I was studying my bachelor's and I thought, okay, I'm going to become a cheerleader. I'm going to become a cheerleader. But then with CompSci, you get so engrossed in your own little world. And then it's just the whole like stereotype being like, oh, but you're a, a STEM graduate. Why would you want to do cheerleading? Like, that doesn't seem like a thing you'd want to do. And I was like, oh, okay, no, I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And then I did my master's and thought, I'm my own person now. <laughs> I should be able to do whatever I want. So I tried out for the team. I got onto a level two team, which was pretty good on my first try. And then since then, it's just been a love story. I've broken my hand and still competed. Okay. And there's still like a bend in my like hand now, but... Well, is that you throwing someone in the air? Yeah, and then I caught her, and it felt weird, and we were going up into the next stunt where her foot is all across my hand, and my hand was throbbing, and so like I dropped the stunt, and I coach started shouting at me, being like, why did you drop the stunt? Because it's, it's quite harsh training. When you say drop the stunt, you mean you drop the person? Yeah, you don't, like, drop them, but you, like... Yes. put them down no, you mean you drop them <laughs> that's what it is I, I put drop, them down and then I looked them. at my hand and it went and it just was it looked really weird and then you know as soon as you look at it and then you feel the pain and you're like oh, oh. then I went to the doctors and they were like does it hurt that much but I think I have quite a high pain threshold so I was like it's not that bad it sort of feels like a sprain did you know what a sprain felt like before? Yeah! Okay. And I thought, oh, okay, like, this just feels like a really extreme sprain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I went another two weeks of just, like, training on it. And it just it wasn't getting any better. And I thought, oh, okay, this is really bad. I should probably go in for an x-ray. And they usually don't let people, like, get just a random x-ray. But I was really... I made a fuss. And as soon as they got the x-ray back, they were like, oh, we're so sorry. I'm really sorry. Because my bone had split completely uh-huh. into. Oh. And it was like. So it had been in a bad way for a couple of days now. Yeah. And they hadn't picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, why do you think they hadn't picked it up? I think it's probably because the fact that. What, you weren't complaining that much? Yeah. But I told them exactly what happened. Why, how my hand was hurting, the ways in which I couldn't use it. But I just don't think they took into consideration that I wouldn't be, like, 
in balls of tears, like just being like, oh, my hand. Because you weren't, you weren't a drama queen. Yeah, because I could still use it. You know what the funny thing is that, because I've done interviews with other people, and one interview is this lady who's in the medical um, industry. She said they teach when you're in hospital, mm. in um, teaching, that black people, especially black women, can have a higher threshold of pain, so they don't feel pain that much. Yeah. So it could have been the case that they looked at her and they remembered their training thinking she's not really that bothered in that case. Yeah, but that's so dangerous. Like, for example, that happened to my mum. She was dealing with a cyst, and, like, she got a hernia, then a cyst inside her hernia. 16 years. And she was like, oh, the pain's pretty bad. Goes to the doctor, and the doctor's like, oh, okay, it can't be that bad. You're literally living your everyday life. 16 years. Mm-hmm. And then it was just one time she collapsed and had to have emergency surgery. Mm-hmm. So you nearly lost her, but she's still around. Yeah. So it's just like... They should understand that, yeah, we probably have a high pain threshold and, like, we want to be strong for our families and the people we care for. Mm-hmm. However, we're probably still suffering inside and you probably should mm-hmm. do some extra checks. So, so it's a case of either demanding to be seen or get yeah. what you want or becoming like, ah, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> take me now if the pain's too much. <laughs> <laughs> In that kind of thing, yeah. That was my best woman impression. <laughs> Uh, so what's the name of your competitive team sparks all stars sparks all stars yeah so we train in this really big cheer gym in east london and you should know since where you picked Uh, me up is that was um is that off the a13 yeah so like um talent central so yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. so i i live around an hour 30 minutes comfortably away from training center like the training center wait a minute you live in, in, in i won't say where you live but you live in that beeb yeah well buckinghamshire because they don't know you have your address <laughs> but so you travel far to do that yeah so it's it's something i love doing i feel so happy whilst i'm doing it last year i took a year out and it wasn't very good for my mental health because I realized I need physical activity to mm-hmm. like process things. Like I'll be like throwing, catching people, and like working through like work like mm. problems in my head. Do you, and you then, ever get thrown? Um, I'm you, scared. You're, you're quite I, a strong girl. Aren't yeah, you? I don't have um, I don't have trust for people like but that. But you need to have trust. You dropped your friend the other day, so you should at least let her throw you. <laughs> yeah, let's throw her, throw her up, and just walk away. <laughs> I'll just look away and be like, oh, sorry. Uh, we did that in school one time. I remember <laughs> we threw someone up in the air and it all walked off. And she went, <laughs> fell back down. You know, kids are terrible, man. They, she, she went back down on the concrete. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's good. And like this year, I'm trying to like improve my tumbling so I can like rank up in like different levels. What's tumbling? So it's gymnastics, so it's pretty much floor gymnastics where you just like run and throw your body. So into you like... spin and backflip yeah. and twist and do that rocket kind of culture yeah. thing. Yeah, and the, that's like really fun. And then there's jumps, and mm-hmm. jumps are my favorite because I used to be a sprinter, so I have like pretty good like jumping legs. So yeah. like I have pretty like. Well, you've defined... got long, long legs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even even with your platforms on. <laughs> <laughs> well, your platform's cushioned because they're really big, isn't it? They're like um, a, no, not an really. Inch, an inch. <laughs> <laughs> they make me feel really powerful. Like some women wear heels, I wear really big platforms. Okay. Yeah. Mm, do you like sixties music? Yes. Oh well, we park our cars in the same garage. Sixties <laughs> and Motown. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm about. Yeah. Oh. They call me old, but yeah. yeah. That's that's his line. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I, I, I get the I get the oh you're such a hippie and I'm like, okay, thank you. Like, yeah, if, if that's you know, an insult. But to me, <laughs> it's quality music. Yeah. It's you can hear the lyrics, yes. everything blends, mm-hmm. and it's also proven to prove to be timeless, regardless yeah. of the generation. People say, oh, I like this song. Mm-hmm. My granddad listens to this, or my mum listens to this. Yeah. That kind of thing, in that respect. So you spoke about the tears. In, yeah. And what makes how what defines your tears? Um, based on your level of like tumbling, so gymnastics, or the flips you can do, and based on the 
like throws and catches that you can do and like the sort of stunts you can do so for example with it goes from one to like sometimes six slash seven so where it's like at one where you can't the flyer themselves can't get higher than your shoulders but at six slash seven the people in the air are doing multiple twists at a time you are so swapping flyers they're so going you, into the atmosphere kind of yeah thing. and then it's yeah. like one person's throwing and catching just one person's throwing and catching and then they're having to pull shapes in the air so the person in the air has to be super flexible they have to do flits are you flexible i say i'm, I'm pretty flexible for put someone on the ground <laughs> because like for jumps you have to be pretty flexible because your jumps have to look pretty but really sharp at the same time because you only Mm -hmm. technically have two counts to hit your jump Mm -hmm. so it's like you have like different like cute different jumps like Mm -hmm. toe touches those are my favorite jumps because everyone likes looking at them Mm -hmm. and being like oh wow are you gonna be going for the olympics when everything gets back to normal or have you ever gone for that so there's like the Cheer Olympics is like called Worlds and it's held in Dis- like Disneyland every year and it's just like everyone from around the world and you see like the best all-star teams and like their music like they start releasing their music and like new oh, team they uniforms to do music and all that with it. yeah so you is it like new- the movie yeah I'm not saying I've seen the movie but I saw a clip oh okay it's yeah. like bring it on but a lot more strenuous like you don't have time to like do all the like fun like catty things because you're too sore after training so to move. N- none of all that bitchy stuff yeah like it's just more of like being around like a female family and like especially being in like stem i was surrounded by guys the entire time so then i had this image about cheerleaders being like oh really like superficial and dumb however like the smartest people i know are cheerleaders it's funny you say that because I I've interviewed about six different uh, models, yeah. professional models from around the world, and some of them had two masters and and a PhD yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but then, but they're not. They may look beautiful and all of that, but they got a brain about them. Yeah. Uh, because really and truly, you think about modelling's hustling. So any hustler has to have a brain about them, otherwise they won't be a hustler for very long. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I suppose it's like drug dealers would make a good CEO. Yeah. Especially if you're on gang and you're a drug dealer. Yeah. So you have to. Because <laughs> you have manage, to manage people. Manage people who really see you rather see you dead than argue with <laughs> you. In that respect. So, so where can we if people want to see see you on Instagram for your flips and twists and corkscrews? Oh, yeah. Where where can they see you? Um, V Sule, so V E E S U L E. Okay, and yes. and that will have all your videos on there. yeah okay is there a group is there a group in instagram for the stars yeah um star uh sparks all stars so it's just sparks all stars okay yeah and that's the instagram for your yeah. group and you'll be on there yeah you'll see me at the last uh like tumbling training just like standing in the corner <laughs> where everyone's doing like really cool flips okay. i'm just there being like oh are you, are you the only sister on there? <laughs> no, there's so many. Really? Yeah, I think at the beginning it was okay. definitely white and blonde. Like, uh, six years ago, it was definitely white and blonde. Like, oh. very white and blonde. But now, because, like, inclusion and, like, you realise that you shouldn't stop yourself from doing something because you don't look like those people, it's still mm-hmm. going to be as fun with you. But physically, we're we're being proven to be stronger. So yes. I would have thought it's better having uh, a sister throwing somebody in yeah. the air, even if they break their hand. Yeah, because, because what I've realised yeah. is that you're like, you're more likely to put yourself in the line of harm for your fly. Like for example, I could have not broken my hand if I just Stepped moved, away. like just moved my hand. But instead of having my flyer fall from what a ten foot height. Mm. I'd rather put my hand there, break my hand, then be like, oh, okay, whatever. This is just going to have to, like, heal itself. So, just just to break that down, was it the way you threw her, the way she landed? What was it that caused the problem? So, I think it was, we went up perfectly, 
and then it's whenever you go slightly too well you're sort of in shock of yourself and so she didn't realize how hard we were going to throw her so she starts to sit up and as soon as you start to sit up that's when your whole body starts to Uh, rotate in the air uh and so as a back sport my whole thing is neck and shoulders neck and shoulders because like cheer is the most dangerous back sport um i'm like in the back of the so you're the person catching yeah okay so like neck and shoulders because like she is the most dangerous like contact sport because mm-hmm. people falling out of the air people running into each other during mm-hmm. tumbles so i put my hand there knowing full well that that wasn't like a safe catch but then i needed to catch the back of her head so it was just like a weird like pushing my hand like underneath her back as she's coming down pushing her hand underneath your back yeah so then she's like uh, coming so wait, like she coming down head first yeah so she's really? yes yeah, so she's oh. coming down like this and so it's sort of like having to like push her to like sit up yeah because if you come down head first or you, you don't get caught you're gonna yeah. break your spine yeah or yeah. like you get right. deductions or like your feet come down or touch the floor really? you get deductions if you come down head first the last thing you learn <laughs> about deductions <laughs> so it's throwing you 10 foot in the air or higher you coming down you coming down like <laughs> all, all, all you can say is deductions yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus hey. oh, okay. so you just like throw your hands in there like Mm. everyone's just like no body on the floor no body on the floor even if you catch nobody them nobody on the floor like, like in a that's deep that's equivalent of no man left behind yeah nobody on the floor <laughs> nobody why didn't you step in there break it so basically it's breaking falls yeah no matter what you do but then I would have said based on what you were saying the actual floor and I don't know if you considered this is lack of communication yeah because if you had said you could have you don't have to say nothing much you could have said five foot and that indicates how high, how hard you're going to throw them. Yeah. Foot. Whether and she can hear that and then she knows straight away. So you might want to have been in a code system. I don't know if you've got one already. Just say, based on these heights, this is what I'm going to call when yeah. I'm throwing you. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, and you just, have to call that. She yeah. can't call that because you may think, yeah, I'm going to do it five and I haven't got the energy. Yeah. She's calling five and I haven't got the energy. I'm going to do, do you see what I mean? Yeah because it's one of those things where like you're taught to push to 100 every single time so then like in a like basket if one of the bases isn't pushing as hard as everyone else it does this yeah, so yeah, it's sort of like we all them. have to be one smooth machine so you'll see like at the beginning of stunts you there'll be a lot of <laughs> like everyone's just whispering what are they whispering so it's like you're either being like, Girls, okay, you guys, this. we got this, we got a, this. Just a, keep breathing, get, just get, keep yeah, breathing. Yeah. Literally, someone in each stunt so group just goes, in uni- breathe, uniform. breathe, breathe, yeah. breathe, breathe. So you all want to breathe as one. You all want to yeah. do think as one. We want to dip as one. We want to like yeah. throw as one. No, that makes sense. It's yeah. like when you're in a, I was in the military. So when you're in a section, yeah, you and you know you're going out there. You want to start operating as one. So yeah. you know, I know where Bob's going to be, and Steve's always over there. Yeah, and things in the rear can this, and we just know how to, where to go, what to do, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Yeah, and that uniformity. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. And it's nice. It's a nice like group of girls, and like I love hanging out with. Them. <laughs> and it's sort of sad because since the new season started. And we're still in like this whole pandemic. Mm-hmm. We haven't been able to do like contact like training. You can go in the woods and do it. I know, but like it's sort of like really sad because you don't know how like you your body is not able to predict how strenuous stunting is because you're constantly lifting, throwing, putting down, lifting, throwing, putting down, lifting, throwing, putting down. So it's a real exercise thing. Yeah, and like we're all scared like as a team collectively of when it gets january and we're all allowed to stunt again whether we'll have the stamina we we'll just start off again isn't it yeah are you got training from home oh yeah we're training from home yeah yeah <laughs> twice a week yeah well, how many but, times do you have to train so it starts off at twice a week and like so it's like a a weekday and then like a sunday 
but you can like supplement so it's three, it up three times a week yeah so you can technically supplement it up to as many as you want to so you can go to like private tumblings you can go to like group tumblings is this when things are normal yeah yeah so this is when it's now and like we're all not touching each other so mm-hmm. it it's not as fun mm-hmm. and it doesn't really make sense mm-hmm. like in the grand scheme of things because mm-hmm. right now we're all pretty much weightlifting because you need to get used to having like the oh, weight of humans like on you again so you do weight because basically what i'm hearing is this is like calisthenics training yeah so you're lifting your own body weight within reason yeah and other people's who's equivalent size to you yep yeah. are, are you one of the bigger taller ladies no <laughs> I don't know. Don't no, I'm not even you, not at all. You don't have any fat people, do you? Oh, the thing is, you don't need to be like, like a size eight. You just need to have stamina and strength. Yeah. But, and like you see with like bodybuilders, you don't really like. They're not really like the same like body shape as like mm-hmm. math and runners. Mm-hmm. It like depends where you are situated on the team. So like if you're a back spot, it's preferable if you have long limbs because mm-hmm. it's easy for you to like spot what's going on quicker and then just throw your arms underneath like if you're a base it's good if you have like stronger thighs because you do a lot of them you spend the majority of the routine in a squat mm-hmm. holding someone so you get to that point and if you're a flyer the thing is you just need to be able to hold your body which is the thing that people keep saying but you don't realize what it means until you're trying to hold someone in the air on one hand on one like one foot one hand and you're like can you just hold yourself so that the flyer has to be able to balance themselves yeah one foot on one foot yeah maybe on the ball of the foot yeah on on your one hand and you have to keep it steady she has to keep herself steady Mm -hmm. and then she has to like change into like different like stretches so first one leg up one up leg like touching her head foot like like right up here Mm -hmm. all with her like coming back down it sounds ninja yeah it is it is really fun yeah well i'm glad you said it's fun it just sounds ninja (laughs) I can see why men don't do it. Men do do it, and really? like what kind of men? Like really, like strong guys. So, for example, there's this couple. Oh, so I was on a previous team with like a couple of girls, and then we all like tried out for this new team. And then one of like one of the girls, her boyfriend was like had been like watching her throughout the entire years, and was just like, okay, like that seems sort of fun, like throwing people in the air, and he's huge like like six foot four and like the broadest shoulders i've seen mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's just like oh yeah no it should be fun it should be like it should be like something fun to do he tries out gets on like a really good team and then two weeks in he starts like throwing really good tumbles but like most people have to train like Wait, several it, months when you say he's friend is he throwing himself is the tumble when he runs and throws himself yeah and like just like based on like you know how like guys are where they're like i'm gonna do a backflip in the garden and they just throw themselves and like mm. you're like wow that's very dangerous, <laughs> very yeah, but dangerous. you know well it, the truth to uh, what you're saying there is he who dares wins yeah it's the old sas motto yeah and it's just and the fact that they're already taller so for them to like throw someone up to like the same height just to like get mm. underneath it's already like a like they're already like so used to it and like mm. as i don't want to say as women we have to train slightly different muscles to be able to yeah, get she, the same she, sort of like heights when we throw yeah, she, but like you've got 60 percent less strength in your upper body than yeah man. yeah so then we then have to like train different like techniques and then like for him it's just like uh, almost natural like yeah. i think like if it wasn't for the whole like it being like seen as a feminine sport it would be more likely like men do it oh or you'd have men as the throwers and women as uh so it'd be like a tovel and dean like you can't you currently have that in like college for like college like cheerleading in the states like where it's like one guy one girl one guy one girl and like but the guys never get thrown in the air it's the women yeah yeah that makes sense but like now you're even getting like guys who get thrown in the air because they're like but you oh um, as no, soon you as you see, see you just want to see the win. <laughs> no the thing is like you think like you want to see the women but like 
No, no, you looking at your face now. You want to see the best. <laughs> Someone's getting hungry, boy. <laughs> no, because like you don't even like look at it like that because you have to be so close to the. There's like a, there are times like a, you are butt, like hands of butt on people. Yeah. <laughs> like you're yeah, all up in everyone's of, business. Yeah, there's a lot of intimacy. <laughs> yeah. So there must be a lot of dating amongst. Um, um, not really. Like because it's almost like family. Like you wouldn't. Oh, like you. <laughs> Really? Okay. You see these people sweating, you see these people like crying because like trading has gotten a little bit like much and you just need to take a breather. You see these people at the worst, at the worst, but you also see them at their happiest. Like whatever, like medal ceremony, like mm-hmm. that's the greatest time because mm-hmm. you just realize how much work you put in all year for this. Mm-hmm. But other than that, you just, they're like family. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, it's been great talking to you. Oh, so, lovely yes, speaking to you too. <laughs> again, maybe maybe we'll be picked up, picking you up again another time, yeah. and, and we can talk about the us. Was it the other thing you do? Oh, gardening! Oh, I can talk about that, another year. That will be that will be another episode for another day. <laughs> but okay then, thanks a lot. Oh, thank and you happy so to much. Have you. We hoped you liked that episode. Keeping in mind, we never know who we are going to interview. We post twice a day, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. GMT. Have you ever considered the future economies to invest in? Why not listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories? Considering Africa has the fastest growing economies and population on Earth and has done for many years, it holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. We publish twice a week, Tuesday, with a guest investor, and Fridays talking about investment, politics, and history, providing a clear understanding for any potential investor.